There's equal parts courage and lunacy in wanting to start your own wine label in Napa Valley. But when you travel the world and work harvests in two hemispheres, you learn a few things. We're humbled to introduce you to Ola Bisi. All right, well, good to see you again. Good to see you. And thanks for having us out. And I'm fascinated by your story because it's one of those stories that you don't get to hear enough of and mm -hmm. someone just pursuing the dream and doing it in a magical place like this. So walk me through that first inclination where you had, I, I think I can make wine and I want to make wine and I want to chuck everything and do that. Well, it's 20 years ago and my wife got a job. We were living in San Francisco. She got a job up in Calistoga designing wine labels and I said, Sure, I'll tag along because I'm unemployed and I got nothing better to do. And six months after we moved here, I was still unemployed. And I called up Cake Bread Sellers and said, hey, you guys hiring this time of year? And right. said, yeah, it's harvest. So uh, why don't you come in tomorrow? I went and I just tried to look big and strong like I could, you know, lift stuff. And they said, yeah, why don't you start next week? And all of a sudden I was in harvest, working every day, you know, 13, 15 hours a day. And I loved it. It was the first job that I loved, and I thought, okay. And that's I can do this. everyone has this glamorous vision of harvest and everything. It's 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 just a lot of hard work, hard and you've work. got to be. <clears throat> if you are going to enjoy it, you have to be like romantically into wine and kind of crazy about it. So mm -hmm. that every, even cleaning tanks and cleaning the floor and you know busting your butt is right. like fun. Mm -hmm. You get to participate. You know. And so that led to what? So basically I was 29 at the time, felt like I was a little bit behind the curve. And luckily Cake Bread hires these international exchange workers. So if you, you know, say your family owns a, a winery in New Zealand, they're gonna send you to Napa and see what they know in the off season, which right. is because it's alternate. Kind of a knowledge sharing type of. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and so I met people from all over the world. So within a year and a half, I got to go to Australia, be an assistant winemaker which is a job they never would give me in Napa after a year and a half of experience. Sure. And, um, and then I continued to do that. So I would double up on my harvest. I'd go to Australia, then I'd come back to Cake Bread, and then I went to South Africa, then back to Cake Bread, and then eventually went to Bordeaux and got to make wine there. So you got to train on everybody else's dime yes. and really see what the experts do and, and learn from that and then mm -hmm. decide a while ago to actually, I think I can do this on my own. Yeah. And how do you, I'm really interested in how you approach your wife and say, honey, I think I, think I got this. And I know, uh, I know I've been unemployed for a while. Well, yeah. it, it, was, it was kind of the only best option. Uh, okay. right? If I'm going to continue in this business, I can't be an assistant winemaker for the rest of the time. I can't make a living for our family. And I need to be a winemaker. In order to be a winemaker, we need to start our own label so I can be the winemaker for my own label. And then the philosophy behind your winemaking style. Is it a, to use the cooking analogy, is it just kind of a concoction of all of the best things that you've learned over the years from around the world to say, I like that? Or did you find one particular style where you said, wow, this speaks to me? What I learned from synthesizing all of those techniques was that as little as you can do to manipulate the wine, usually you end up with a better wine. Sure. So my technique is basically try to pick, you know, at that perfect day that is in line with how I want to produce the wine, my, my, how I imagine that winemaking path to be. And if I get that day, if I get that ripeness that matches that how path. I want to make the wine, then I have to do very little from that time to the time it gets in the bottle. What, because you're obviously doing some exceptional stuff, what is the most exciting, rewarding thing for you? Um, well, it's, you know, we do winemaker dinners mm -hmm. and we, that kind of is, is the entire package. So then I've got our club members. They're at a, you know, a big table. There may be 20 of us. We've got a really great chef from Napa or wherever it happens to be. We've worked hard to pair those wines with particular dishes. We serve it and we party. And when those wines are tasting great with those dishes, with 
with our club members, with our customers, you know, it's, that's pretty much it. That or serving the wines at like my sister's weddings and, and those, those kinds of things. Because that's, you know, that's the romantic vision of being a winemaker is making the wine for events, for, for these social occasions. Well, we're excited to feature it, so should we taste some wine? Yeah. Wow. At Cellar Angels, we marvel in the realization of dreams. And at Olabisi, it looks like this dream is just getting started. Do yourselves a favor and get some of this wine. Thank you so much for all your support.